Everyone loved you. Baby Noah Tomlin's sudden disappearance rocked to the community of Hampton, Virginia. They've checked under houses. They've checked in sheds. They've checked cars. I'm hoping they checked the trash cans. I'm hoping that's why it hasn't been picked up. They've had drones out here. They've had dogs out here. The two-year-old was living in the Bayside Mobile Home Village with his mother, Julia Tomlin, and two other siblings. The morning of June 24th, 2019, Tomlin reports baby Noah missing and a massive search ensues. We put so many different sets of eyes on the um, immediate search area. Law enforcement and community members teaming up, searching for baby Noah. So any scrap of clothing, um, any diapers, any evidence that may lead us in a, a particular direction, we're gonna, we want to take that into consideration. At the Hampton Landfill, city crews sift through two million pounds of garbage, hoping baby Noah could still be alive. We feel very confident that we have exhausted all reasonable efforts and all reasonable resources um, in our search area. Then on day 10, a grisly discovery. Baby Noah is found dead at the Hampton Steam Plant, the place where city waste goes to burn. His autopsy results revealing his skull was fractured in two places. The cause of death, blunt force trauma to the head with signs of battered child syndrome. The manner of death, homicide. We'll always love you. <laughs> and Jesus will take care of you. Julia Tomlin told investigators her baby hit his head while in the bathtub unattended and drowned. But investigators found her story to be inconsistent with the horrific evidence in the case. The 35-year-old is charged with murder, unlawful disposal of a dead body, and child neglect. And this is a case where the mother had some mental issues, but it appears that at this point uh, she is competent to stand trial. Let's bring in Julie Grant with more details on all of this. Um, it, it, Julie, there, there's so many um, you know, ways to look at this and, and, and just say this, this should never, ever happen, but we've seen it too many times already here on Court TV. Um, but at this point, her mental status, she's going to be able to stand trial? You are correct. That's the big news coming from the court today, Vinny. This case, if if you think back, our viewers are so good about paying attention to these cases. Back in March, we talked about this case with little baby Noah Tomlin. And Julia Tomlin was set to go to trial, but then that case was postponed because she needed to undergo this competency evaluation. And today, it was decided she is competent to stand trial. So now the question is, when will that trial happen, right? Because in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Supreme Court there has put out a notice that all jury trials in both civil and criminal cases are suspended until further notice for obvious reasons because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So what likely will happen, Vinny, is that the court will schedule a date in the near future, hoping this trial can happen sooner rather than later. Um, but best estimate from some watching the case closely is perhaps early in the new year. All right. You and I have been having a, a lot of conversations about this concept of prior bad acts and how they impact different trials. Is that going to be an issue in this one? I am so happy you asked me that. I, I think it might, Vinny. And here's why. This woman has a prior conviction for child neglect from 2010. She served about five months behind bars for that crime. And we know that generally we can't use character evidence to show propensity, right? We can't say once a child abuser, so always a child abuser, unless prosecutors can come up with an exception. And I was really thinking about this today, like as if I was the prosecutor in the case, how could I possibly get it in? And I thought with that exception that shows that there was an absence of mistake or accident, if they could show that she had an MO of maybe disciplining with abuse. You know, that case from 2010 that was involving a daughter of hers that she sat her on a hot stove, Vinny, and the daughter was burned. She didn't take her for treatment until several days later. Those burns turned into red welts and blisters, uh, just terrible. And she gave investigators a story they didn't buy about not knowing the stove was hot and getting distracted and uh, her, um, the baby's father wanting to take a picture. But long story short, that they didn't buy it and she was ultimately uh, convicted. Then here, fast forward now to this case where she's telling investigators baby Noah fell and hit his head in the bathtub. 
Um, but, you know, what, what's really key is that, like, there's more evidence about child abuse here as well in this case that's going to come out. So I'm thinking these prosecutors have to at least try. Right, Vinny? I know if you were prosecuting this case, you would at least try to get that in through that exception, right? What if they got to lose? Absolutely. Uh, how strong is the rest of the evidence in this case? It's good. It's circumstantial, but it's good. And there is some evidence of ongoing child abuse with baby Noah. Uh, as heartbreaking as this is, and, and these details are, are really going to turn your stomach, but when that baby was found, there were only two body parts that were recognizable. The baby's left leg and the baby's liver. They had to bring in an anthropologist to put together this baby's bones. And what they found was there were two causes of death. The medical examiner determined blunt force trauma to this baby's head with the two skull fractures, Vinny, um, that had no time to heal, by the way. And then they also found battered child syndrome, severe bruising in that left leg that had started to heal. Also other fractures in the baby's jaw and in the baby's ribs. Uh, that had healed. Uh, the Commonwealth's attorney, he's making no bones about it. He is saying this child was tortured. So to me, knowing that past conviction, the state of decomposition this body was in, you know, the abuse of the corpse that's being alleged, and I, I think this is, albeit a circumstantial case, a very strong one against her. So we may not even get to the point of a trial, but this woman, uh, she may just decide to roll the dice, Vinny. She doesn't have a whole a lot going on for it. it was also reported that little baby Noah was in foster care very early in his life. Um, and, and the reasons, um, uh, you know, social services couldn't really comment on why, uh, but he reportedly spent some time there. So you wonder if that beautiful child ever had a chance in this home with her. Incredibly tragic, but an another case, of course, that we are tracking here at Court TV. Julie Grant, thank you so much.